I'm live. Yes, it says I'm live. Hi, you guys. So, okay, we're most of us are on voluntary or seriously asked, <laughs> like social distancing, right? A lot of bars, restaurants, businesses closed, cutting back on hours, whatever. So I started mine voluntarily last week because um, my father is 75. And I'm a caretaker for him. And so, and because like I said, because I could, right? So hang on one moment. Let me go open up the chat if you don't mind. I'll be right back. I'm still here. I'm just popping out the chat, you guys, so I can see it in case anybody comes in. Okay, I'm coming. There we go. So, um, this haul is from two weeks ago before I put myself on social distancing and decided to stay home for a while, okay? So, no, I haven't been out thrifting recently. I'm really kind of taking this serious to do my part since I can, since I do work from home, since I can, okay? So, um, there are two little hauls here, but combined, they kind of make a big haul, <laughs> and it's a few clothing pieces and some nice fun glass, vintage and modern. Of course, you guys know I like the modern stuff too and the art glass. Um, but anyways, we're going to just chat for a minute to see if anyone comes in. I did give about a half hour notice. That's all on Facebook and um, Instagram. So let's see. Yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. I did do what I said I was going to do on that St. Patty's collab where I used the gold, I mean, the greenish dishes that I bought and some that I already had for, you know, I made my husband um, corned beef brisket and then the potatoes and the cabbage and he got the Irish soda bread at the store for me the other day. So it turned out well. Um, I'm vegan, but he's not. But there were plenty of vegetables and they were great and Irish soda bread and I bought him a coconut cream pie and we used all of our little green fun stuff. <laughs> and so that went well. I'm halfway through spring cleaning. That's awesome. So staying home is not so terrible sometimes to get caught up on things, right? Anyways, so some of you that watch me because you like to learn, you're going to be a little frustrated maybe because you're going to have to learn something a little bit more important. I have not done my research on all of these items yet. I just, since I've been homebound, I'm just like ready to socialize. So I'm abusing and using you guys to socialize with the live show. Okay. So some of it, um, I may just lollygag on this and it may turn out to be long as I look some things up. But more importantly, those of you that kind of rely on some of us to say exactly what this is, well, you're going to kind of be prompted to think about the research because it's really important. I noticed in the reselling community, those of you that have been in it for a while are going to know what I'm talking about. Like there's people that sell the programs and stuff like we're going to teach you how to source at the thrift store and blah, blah, blah. And some of them are my friends. So some of them doing them on my friends and some of them buying them on my friends. So I don't know. Um, allow me some leadway. Love me anyways. But I have a very strong opinion that if you have to pay a bunch of money for a course to teach you how to go to the thrift store and find quality items, I feel like you're already so far behind the curve because the main part is about research and being resourceful. Now, I realize some people say, yeah, but it kind of expedites it. It cuts back on time. But, okay, that's all. Because some of them doing these courses are my friends, like I said. And some of them taking them are my friends. I'm just saying there comes a point where you need to cut the cord and just learn how to be resourceful and do your research. Okay, that's all. So, let's just go ahead and start. Somebody is here. Oh, hi. Hi, Catherine. I think some of your real close friends call you cat. So someday I hope I can just say cat too. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you're doing okay. I think, don't you have kiddos? I think you have kids, right? So you've kind of been laying low too, I believe. 
a lot of my friends are laying low, especially when the kids have to stay home. That's right. My, yeah. Okay. Good. Cat. Yes. I've really been trying hard. Like, I've been in the research community since, like, before Instagram, before Facebook on different platforms. And I've kind of followed along as the different platforms, you know, pick up the reseller community and the young ones, you know, the young ones are going to go for the new platform. So, you know, of course, you know, 20s, 30 year olds kind of migrated over to Instagram first. And then the rest of us kind of followed too. I still use all the platforms though to socialize. And so, I, and then I added vintage, right? I added more vintage hard goods. And so then I'm all of a sudden when I'm doing my keyword searching and searching out other people and other YouTube channels, I'm meeting all these wonderful people that are into vintage reselling, not in its entirety, but predominantly, you know, so I, I didn't even know that they were there on YouTube. So that's, you know, I was resourceful, did my research and I've been meeting a lot of people and having fun. So Catherine is one of them. I met her doing the collab of oh, cat cat is one of them so you might check out her channel um very cute to look at as she's talking and she has some cute items um not just strictly vintage so okay let me see i can't really read the chat too much over there yeah you're one of the <laughs> you're one of the younger ones because i'm older i'm i'm old school definitely og Started out in flea markets before the internet. But anyways, I've told that story all across different people's channels before. Well, I'm just going to entertain myself and rattle on. And some people might pop in and out. And hi, Connie. And maybe some of them will watch this later out of boredom. A lot of people are watching more YouTube lately. I can tell by people's stats because, you know, we're all homebound. I know I've been searching frantically and for new people to watch and catching up on people's like backstock things that that they put up before I, you know, met them or found them. OK, anyways, if you watch my thrift with me, some of these you saw me pick up. And again, I haven't done research on some of these that I need to. I'm either going to do it now because I'm just lollygagging and having a great time socializing. Ah, I've been in the house for a week. <laughs> so um, I pretty much just talked to Lindy and a few people in DM and, you know, the daughters. Anyways, saw this on an end cap. This is definitely modern. I'm almost positive, but it was only $1.99. It's not by a great maker. I can tell by the Pontal, you know, it's probably just an import, but it's super cute, isn't it? Now I'll confess it was $1.99 because it's missing this part of the tail. But because that, I don't know, I just looked at it and I thought, you know, that really, the way he's riding a wave and jumping, I'm just going to stand that down. And I really don't think it takes away from it at all. So for $1.99, probably not going to sell it. I'm probably going to keep this um, for my collection I'm doing that vintage um, glass wall, and I'll have a little section for my paperweights and some of my glass figurines. Not too many. I do not want a collection to get out of hand. When I was younger, I collected mermaids before it was the big fashion. But anyways, so little by little, my friends, my family, they're all buying me mermaids for every like holiday or birthday. And it ended up being about 300 pieces. They're all in boxes at my mom's basement. So she, she kind of is keeping them for me. Like, that's a huge collection. And so now that I'm having a different type of collection of art glass and adding some vintage, because I want to do one of those art glass colorful uh, wall displays, I'm trying to be more picky, so, so to speak. So, so it doesn't get carried away because I'm really not wanting to fill the whole house up. You know, I want some blank spots. My husband likes that too. Some blank spots in the house. You know, I don't know. But anyways, I think that was a good value for $1.99. Definitely worth saving. And then this isn't too terribly old either. It was on sale for $2. So it's just a little asparagus dish with a spoon. So you put some kind of relish or sauce in it, right? But that's cute. Um, I think it needs to be turned around the lid, but I kind of like it when I find this kind of vegetable dishes that are of a less popular food item, you know, like I have an artichoke one for sale, you know, and this is asparagus. So I kind of like that. And I think someone else will too, to have something a little, you know, more unique. So I'll probably put this up. There's no maker mark. It could be vintage. It could be. A slightly vintage 
um, just by looking at the wear on it and what it's made out of. So it's probably about the $15, $20 piece, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, 99 cents. I have no clue. It's some kind of, I don't know. Just look at it. <laughs> It just kind of moves on its own. It's like a little tin turtle, and it just kind of does its own thing, just at the slightest little motion. I just thought that was super cute. I don't know anything about it, but I'll find out. It could be very modern, just a little souvenir, but normally the souvenirs would have like um, from Jamaica or, you know, from Thailand, you know what I mean, from Florida. I just was fascinated by it, <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to give it a try. Here's something I'm excited about. I found my first little salt cellar. Look, $1.29. My first one. And I believe that's called slag glass, right? And it's blue and white. Little salt cellar glass. I haven't investigated whose it is yet. You know, Westmoreland. I don't know. Viking, Federal, whatever. I have Indiana. I have it. There's only so many companies, right? So I'll narrow it down and figure it out by the pattern. Super cute, though. Somebody might already know. Hi, Todd. Um, some collecting life is good stuff. And then everyone else started by, oh, yeah. It can, stuff like that can get out of hand real easy, right, Kat? You have to be careful. Now, I'm pretty sure this is a Murano piece. Um, a lot of them aren't marked, right? But it just has that feel. But I won't say for sure in my listing until I verify it. But I've sold these little geo type things before. The last one I sold for 50 ish. It was the summer so, and this one's leaning that way. See the ombre color? This one's leaning that way too, right? Very heavy, very quality. Now it does have some scratches on it, but there's they're not real deep. And believe it or not, there are some things, if we're careful, I need a disclaimer with this, <laughs> be very careful, but there are some ways I read where you can kind of get some of that out, you know? But um, so I'll have to think if I want to try it on a piece like this or not. I might just let it go a little bit cheaper as is. But definitely I'm very, I'm really leaning toward Murano um, and maybe even the summer. So I'm not sure, but you definitely want to look at stuff like this. If you're new to looking at the hard goods and the vintage and the art glass, you definitely want to pick stuff like that up. I know a lot of my earlier followers are used to me doing mainly clothing, and maybe a few hard goods if they were over like $50. And I've definitely expanded. So, um, And so to my new vintage friends, some of them are going to laugh because they know this stuff like the back of their hand. I'm, I've just learned it all, what little I do know, in like six months. Okay, so... This little, this might be porcelain. It's signed with a number. It's a little cracked where the sticker was, but there's enough sticker there. I might be able to identify it. It's red and gold. Might be able to identify it anyways. It was $1.59 and the crack is really not going to be that bothersome, but you see this little dent here. It's for one of those lights, like what go up in those ceramic Christmas trees, but she's really well painted. I don't know if that, let it focus. Yes. Cause she's so white. Okay. Um, but is it, look at her cute little face. You guys, she's just like an airbrushed bisque. Oh my gosh. She's adorable. It's not my style for collecting, but I know cute when I see it. Oh my gosh. Let me bring, look at that face. They really did a good job. So I'm pretty sure that's going to be some kind of Japan sticker, maybe a left in, I don't know. Um, but I'll find out. I think there's enough there to tell. So she's super cute. And those little stick-in um, lights are relatively cheap, like at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And sometimes you even just find them at a thrift store. So next time I see one, I probably have one. I'll probably get it to put in here. She's adorable. And then um, see how much she's worth, if I can identify who made it. She's got to be worth at least $15, $20, right? So... Okay, huh. I did look this up when I bought it, $1.69, wait a minute, $1.99. She's not worth a whole lot, but I always look at the cobalt blue glass. Um, so pretty. Let me turn this other light on. Let me, hang on, you guys, I'm still here. Let me turn this little hand light on to backlight this. 
you guys, this isn't going to be the most professional thrift with me. I'm really just super lonely <laughs> from staying home. Okay. Oh, there we go. Can you now backlit? See that beautiful cobalt? Yes. So it's a little bunny jar, like a Mrs. Bunny jar. She's almost, an yeah, she's anthropomorphic because she's wearing a dress. So that's a human-like quality, right? So she's wearing a dress. Let me turn this light off. By the way, that little handheld ring light, they're about mm, $12 to $15 on eBay. So handy. Get the ones that have the um, dimmer and the color temperature switch, okay? So handy for just like shooting little things. Okay, so I think these are worth about um, $15. Not sure who it's from. I can't remember. But I'm going to sell this. That's cute. Cobalt blue glass you always want to take a peek at, right? Let me pull you guys up on my phone so I can see the chat every once in a while. Bear with me. Um, there we go. And turn it down. Okay, there. Now I can see. That's better. Angie resells. Hi, Angie. Okay. I'm going to keep on trucking. So, where were we at? Oh. So... You would definitely look at this even if you didn't know glass yet. The quality is there. You would definitely notice the difference. This probably has a lot of lead content. And I don't know why they have so much fun with this, putting the stickers over the information they know we want to see. There is a label under it, but they left enough that I could see Lennox. Um, Lennox isn't quite like a Baccarat, if I'm saying that right. That commands more money, but it's good enough, especially something of this quality. And I, I kind of like the the Art Deco style of it. So I'm not sure. I don't have a nice lead crystal piece for my wall. And I don't want a lot of clear glass. So this might be the answer to have one just like kind of simple clear glass. And it's very quality lead crystal glass. Lennox is a good enough name. This might, because resale value is probably about $10, $12. So this might be the good a good addition for my wall, right? Something like this. I love the clean lines and design of it. So that's what might happen to that. But it does have a little bit of resale value, especially if you can have two. But you could always sell as a replacement, right? A lot of people like pairs to their candles. Let's do some of these plates. This is a new name for me, Minton. So it is Bone China made in England. So just a little tiny ginger jar. So I think this would probably have a better name than ginger jar because of the size I'm guessing when I go to do my research. Nice floral pattern. The name has a little bit of resale value, not real high end, but a little bit of resale value made in England. So I thought $1.99 is fair. Actually, this was half price, I believe a dollar. So I think something like this, they're bigger pieces I saw solds of bigger items, not just the jars and stuff. I saw some decent solds, like $40, $50. Something of this size is probably under $20. But um, I have to get off my high horse about only selling things over $20, $25 because of, you know, time, time, time. Because also eBay likes an active store. And also because I can. Because I'm a smaller store. I do this mainly for fun and to set up for Social Security when um, Steve retires. And I'm semi-retired. So we can't make a lot of money anyways when we're on Social Security. So keeping it at a certain level is really just fine. So I'm okay to save things that I find curious or interesting or want to scratch off my bucket list, even though maybe they're only going to bring $10, $12, $15. So I decided to get off my high horse about that. And an active store is a happy store. So there's that, right? Anything that brings attention, someone might come in for this and browse around the rest of my eBay store. So some of you will be glad to know. I'm going to quit being so snotty about that. Right? I admit when I'm like, wrong or I'm not gonna say wrong but changing gears making a pivot makes sense um these are just some limo this is a limoge this isn't gonna be a high-end one um I haven't this one's from France I haven't really peeled off the label to look at the name if it's Haviland or what elite works oh elite works yeah I did look this one up so I just like having some limoge or limoge or limoge plates under my belt um because it just seems the thing to do to save the Limoges stuff 
as a vintage reseller as well, right? So this one's pretty good enough. The gold is in good shape around the edge. So last one, I think I sold, resold for about $18. They're pretty quick and easy to ship, first class, even protecting them. They usually still fall under first class, which is great. Feel like I'm doing a good thing, replacing it. Got some Lobos under my belt too. Excuse me, there's a hair on me. So I'm thinking this one's probably about the $15, $18 range too. There'll be a pattern name perhaps. Sometimes there's an artist signature, like certain artists that worked or if they bought blanks. Sometimes the artist is unknown, but they did an exquisite job. I picked up some of those because I've seen other resellers do it and have success, right? So hang on, let me put this to the side because there's another one in here okay and i'll bring them both up more closely Ooh, i have a lot hang on okay i'm ladylike <laughs> hang on, no. let me check the chat <laughs> yeah quit being snotty just kidding no oh connie you know me you know me from lindy's channel i can be snotty uh, you teased me for being snotty just the other day when I said, anyone I catch out thrifting, doing a thrifting video when we should be staying home to protect the elderly and the children or getting a thumbs down. <laughs> I didn't really mean it. <laughs> I mean, I do worry about some of my friends that I see still going out thrifting, you know, but, but I watched their video. I did not give them a thumbs down. All, you know, whatever. I'm not, I don't want to be too judgy like that, but yeah, <laughs> I think you said something like, well, that'll show them. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, yeah, this is just another Limoges. I haven't peeled off the label. So this one was $249 and $249. I think these were on sale. So that'd be half price, the purple. Anyways, so let it focus. Not too bad of patterns, right? And the, the gold on this one's still good. But on the back, you know, you just, oh, that's not going to focus with the white. Hang on. Bear with it. I know that's so annoying. Never mind, because that's annoying when it won't focus on the white. Anyways, you just turn them over, right? And you see if they say some kind of Limoges or something else interesting. I've picked up some Rosenthal, too. I think I've had some success with Rosenthal and some other names that I've learned. So if it's cheap enough and in good enough shape, no cracks, you know, holding it up to the light and stuff. I take it over to the window. I'm up for it. I'm up for it. Let me start putting stuff down here. Okay. As a matter of fact, I don't have... <laughs> Connie, you know you're a reseller friend of mine. Okay. Ooh, I'm kind of excited about this. I'm going to unwrap it. I haven't worked with this yet. When I put myself on lockdown, I just started spring cleaning... Um, oh, what is that? Another channel that um, I've been planning all last year debuted. Um, so I've been really busy. The spring cleaning feels good. Oh my gosh. I'm like, it just feels good to clean and get rid of some things and get organized because when spring and summer comes, you know, I'm at garage sale. I still hope to get to go to Bid Summit in LA because that's not till October. So this might all be under control. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The situation, the pandemic might get under control and, you know, our lives go kind of back to normal, so to speak. Um, and I still get to go. We'll see. Anyways, I don't, this isn't really a soapstone, but it sure feels like some kind of stone. Okay. It is gorgeous. I know from experience, this kind of ethnic or tribal stuff will sell. So isn't that awesome? I don't know if this is like... An African region, if I say anything on PC, forgive me, um, Australian, like Aboriginal. I'm looking over at my big map on the wall. So this is totally awesome. The way it was etched and carved in. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I can stick my fingernail in the, you know, all the line drawing. Isn't that awesome? You would have picked this up too. So $3.99, and I think that was half price at... Um, when we went looking for St. Patty's Day stuff so I could do that collab with Kat and Alex. Um, I don't know if it was half price or not, but even if it was $4, worth it. So I'll definitely do very diligent homework on this set. I think any one of you would have picked this up too. Super cool. I just know that kind of stuff sells anyways. 
Um, and I'm pretty sure this is vintage. I'm pretty sure that said made in Taiwan, not Japan. I mean, um, China, this little, you know, those little gold stickers. I'm pretty sure that says Taiwan. It's kind of scratched off. It was 49 cents. It's kind of like a melamine, not composite, but like a melamine. But look, this is a little medallion Alaskan souvenir. So I like that for 49 cents and I'm pretty sure it's vintage. I know that says made in Taiwan. That puts it most likely 70s, right? So, and the color scheme, the way the pictures are on it too. So I might see if any of these iconic tourist attractions that are showing are still valid. And I'll tell you why. Um, anytime I see anything from New York skyline that involves still has the Twin Towers in it, I pick it up because I've been selling that kind of stuff. And any kind of 9-11 memorabilia has been selling. I sold a skyline picture about this big, what, last month for about 40-ish dollars um, that had the old Twin Towers in it. So that's what's causing me to say this, okay, about this. Okay, you guys, this is going to be a long one. I won't be offended if you pop in and out because I'm just going to satisfy my urge to socialize and just talk about all this stuff. And since I haven't done my research on some of it, I don't think we'll have any problems. If I need to make a new moderator, I will, though. Okay, so we did all this. So far, so good, right? Oh, I love this. This is signed J. Diller. I don't know. I'm going to do research on this for sure. $1.59, this little ceramic plate. This is a special process. Look, it looks all diachroic, right? Um, it's kind of metallic -y. And see the nice birds, eagles, I'm pretty sure. I adore this. So I'm definitely going to look it up. Hopefully, she's somewhat of a famous artist. Um, and I'll try to find out the process and determine exactly what kind of ceramic or clay this is um i love this oh they put holes in it too so it could hang on the wall people don't really do a whole lot of plate hanging on the wall like they used to i noticed um some of the younger vintage vintage lovers are kind of bringing it back a little bit um i might put this in my wall display too can you guys see how cool that is come can you listen hear the texture of it cool right dollar 59 yes i'm gonna pick up all the coolness i might skip this okay because i can't i don't know what to say i don't know if this missing a cork if this is a certain ceremony where you're only supposed to put one flower um and i think some asian cultures they do that and it's a special kind of ritual where you just put one flower in a pot and there are certain pots for that but this one says mexico and i cannot read the name so i will have to sit down and work with this name i'll um, show it to you in a minute do some image researching um usually no two designs are alike right on custom stuff it's nicely made heavily glazed and see if this was it was 250 see if this is a tonala piece or whatever or just a good artist see I can only make heads or tails out of Mexico, but I have had worse signatures and artist marks that I stuck with it and figured it out. It's, it was a plate. It took me, oh gosh, it took so long to figure it out. I had it for two months working on it on and off. And when I finally figured it out, woohoo! I wish I could like would have filmed that process. It was just crazy how I finally figured it out and verified it listed it it sold the next day 40 bucks Woo. so sometimes it is worth a little bit of effort if nothing else what i know and some of you know this too when we are doing a research on other things we go down a rabbit hole one thing leads to another and before you know it, we've learned 10 other things that we didn't know and you know that are now in our memory banks when we, when we go out thrifting so i took a chance on this and there it is We'll see what happens. I'll update when we see what happens with that. Hey, I want to do clothing and get this out of the way. I got three pieces. So if you watch my thrift with me, you know why I got this. Audra had mentioned something in a comment about, hey, the Balmain 2021 fashion show. Did you see it? And so a couple days later, I went to watch it. And I noticed that, you know, 
they did a lot of vinyl, like that mod stuff that was in the 60s. And we kind of redid it in the 80s, but not so much vinyl. It was more like a wet look and some latex when, you know, like the beginnings of goth and kind of like um, dominatrix type look, you know, came in. So I really don't like to wear the vinyl stuff too much from the 60s. But when I saw this, this kind of wet look um, windbreaker jacket with this very definite 80s kind of look at that 80s kind of zipper with the checks on it and the bomber style. I'm like, this is what I will do for my pseudo Balmain look. Um, what was I going to say? And probably some other designers are going to follow suit too. They all kind of tend to kind of like at least lean into certain trends together because no one wants to be outdone. So, and especially if a house gets orders on something, yeah, they're going to follow suit and then the copycats and the dupes will come out. Well, I've already got my little, this isn't a dupe because it's not a copy of anything important. So it, but it's a, um, this is a copycat look, right? So I'm probably going to wear this and then I'll sell it. I got a time which is right. I got to rock it a few times and have fun with it because I don't mind being fashion forward, but then I got to find just that sweet spot when more people are going to be open to wearing the wet look again. Because we are going to do the 80s and 90s as well. And then I, that's the point when I can sell it, right? If I miss that spot and I'm on the downward trend, I might get stuck with it. Not that it matters because it's cute. Super cool. I love the wide band on the bottom too. I really like when things have that. So it was $2.50. It was half price. Or excuse me, $3. Half of $5.99. So. If you like to be fashion forward and you see any wet look, um, you might want to pick it up. Again, I'm not so much for the vinyl, like the vinyl of the 60s, but the wet look that we did, I think um, even if you're a millennial, surely you know of like Pat Benatar in the 80s and early 90s, Il Devo, I don't know, Missing Persons. There's just so many people and some of the some of the disco that kind of leaned in, you know, transformed into um new wave oh yeah the new wave crowd okay the wet look i'm rambling on yes i'm enjoying <laughs> okay yeah i'm just gonna talk and talk this is probably gonna run for a couple hours so seriously i won't be offended if anyone has to go seriously i won't okay so i picked up some more what i thought are like mexican or I don't, what's the PC way to say that? I don't know. Or Indian too. So this one turns out, I'm pretty sure is Mexican Pueblo art. No, this would be Indian then, wouldn't it? Pueblo, Des desert Pueblo pottery, gray feather. What I liked about this is I found this first. If you watch my thrift with me, as you remember, 249. And it was next to a, like a cheap knockoff, a party light kind of like Southwest design. But this one had some providence, so to speak, in it, at least the paperwork with it. You could just tell the quality is different. Okay, I'm coming in. It's going to take it a minute with that lightness. Gosh, you guys, I'm sorry. Let me find something to block because this is really well done. Let's see if we could do this. That helps a little bit. Okay, well, you'll have to trust me. It is signed on the bottom as well. That's not going to work either. Signed on the bottom as well. It's like with the toothpick or knife. Um, this is textured. The feathers have a light texture to them. It's a matte, gritty finish. Not salt glaze. More like a, you know, southwest gritty type finish. Um, I might check on some of the symbolism to see if that's important within that culture. Pueblo Indians, I guess. And then as we went down, those of you that were with me, as we kept on going down, I found two more matching pieces. This one also has the paperwork in it. This one does not, the Indian wedding vessel. They are painted in the same theme. So I'm pretty excited. $1.99, $2.99. What was this? $2.49. So I'm pretty excited. Look, the three-piece set. So I'm going to sell it that way too. So that was cool. Not sure how much, but I did see other, I, I did a quick look up there at their store 
and I did see that th this is somewhat of a thing. The name is good. So, I mean, it's not super high end, but I bet you something like this as a set, what do I have in it? Just under $10, around, ten, yeah, under $10. I'm hoping somewhere around 40-ish, right, at least. All signed, dated, provenance, in great shape. And then this was there too. So I'm like, well, I'm on a roll. Let's pick this out. Now this one says Nimagi. I'm going to bring it in. Nimagi Pottery. And that was a name too. So it's a certain area and a certain technique. I don't know if this is a dip. You know how those little, I don't have one, but I've got a bunch for sale. Those little tiny vases that are kind of like end of days dips or something and people collect those so I'm, i don't i wouldn't think this would be that or a salesman sample because of the size i think this was just intentional but let me bring it in that's pretty there right it is also a matte type of um clay pottery i'm gonna turn it around slowly there it goes the name is stamped and it's also edged I'm going to say, um, spell it for you, N-E-M-A-D-J-I, Nemaji. So that's a name of a pottery house too. The inside is glazed. Hmm. So I will do a little bit, I just quickly saw, okay, the name's good and bought it for that cheap price, $2.99. Um, so I'll do more research and put it up. And then another one as well. This one is uh, Shad Shadrach, and that was a name too, Shadrach, and it's dated 1989, signed twice. This was $1.59, this little bud base of the, let it focus. Oh, whites are hard to come in and show. Okay, sorry. This looks like cliff dwelling scene. And it's lightly like airbrushed with some pastels, like yellows and greens, okay? $1.59, signed twice, artist signed, and then, oh gosh, there we go. Artist signed and then signed and stamped and dated on the bottom too. So I'm like, you're worth more than $1.59, I, just right off the bat, I just know. And so I did Google the name real quick, so okay, I see more listings with that name, we're good on that. It was just... Sorry, you guys, since I became a beacon, I've been losing weight. I put on my Lululemon pants and I'm like, whew, they're just like falling off. I mean, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yes, my ring's been twirling. I went back to being a vegan, what, six or eight months ago. Lost a few pounds. That's not really my main goal. Although I, you know, I could use it to lose a few, you know, it wouldn't, not going to hurt me. I got a little Buddha belly and a little double chin coming up. But um, that really is not my goal, you know, because I like to eat. So I, and at my age, I'm when you get older, you don't worry so much. And I'm like, I'm as cute as I'm going to get people. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> and well, it's been downhill from here. The cute as I'm going to get. I'm married. My husband loves me. So we're growing old together. So I don't worry a whole lot. I do the best I can. And I don't worry a whole lot. We both have little Buddha bellies now, so. <laughs> okay, let's see. So we did all this. Let me put some of this up. And so I, I can bring over some more cool stuff. And I don't break anything because that's how I roll, right? Knock things over. <clears throat> I'm going to back up for a minute. I also got a bunch of Bed Bath and Body Works. Bed Bath and Beyond. Bed, bath and no bath and body works two different things bath and body works those ones at the mall um, a lot of people are very like serious collectors and users of all their sprays and soaks and candles um, they don't sell for a whole lot unless you find a discontinued highly coveted um, scent but they usually cost even if they're on sale you might be able to score them like eight ten dollars they're usually what twelve to fifteen dollars unless you get the sale these were like $1.59. I think I bought three or four of them. I personally only ended up with just one for myself. <laughs> the rest I, you know, let daughters and friends have. And I picked up, you know, I always pick up the smiley faces. Not always. These kind of things, because these I give to people. I already have one of these in myself and in pink. 
course, I kept the pink one because that's unusual. I always buy all of these. Anytime I send out friend mail or any of my friends and family, they get one of these. So I just keep them. They usually don't cost very much, right? And another tip, always buy the Lazy Susan. They are so useful. I got two of them for $2.99. Could have even been half price. I got a wooden Lazy, lazy Susan for when I find like a good vintage, you know, ceramic set that goes in a chip dip set. But these are just, these little plastic ones are just for my own use. Like I have one where my hair products are. So I could just twirl it, you know, and get all to my different hair products. I've got one for spices. You know what I mean? These are just so handy beyond just the kitchen. Okay. So I always pick up stuff like that. Anyways, let's set this stuff down. Talk amongst yourself for a minute. I'm going to move this stuff over where it's safe. Love the little bunny. Because I've got some pictures under here that I want to show. I always look at the art. I don't always buy because I don't, you know, that's a tough one. But so this was half price, right? $2.99, $4.50 at the small little Life, cha Life Network charity. Some of you were with me. Let me bring this in. It's kind of 3D. I'm going to try with my ring light. I'm going to try to move slow so you can see 3D. It's like some kind of thin, kind of like shell and paper, very intricately done, right down to her little hands. Let's see if I could bring that in and like stuff on her. Can you see? Like, look at her face and her little hands doing, wait a minute, <laughs> doing this or something. Interesting frame too. Shadow box framed. So yeah, I'm gonna go for this. I'm gonna see what happens with that. I think that's awesome. <clears throat> no, Connie. Bye. I'll talk to you later. No, <laughs> I feel like you're a lot like me. So <laughs> no, you're my friend. We're cool. Um, this was half price, a dollar. So I have, I'll find out exactly what type of needlework, yarn work, cruel cross stitch this is, right? Um, I've never really seen one with the big chunk lines like this. It makes me feel very seventies, right? So even though it's not like fine detail, I still feel like they did a good job and I feel like it's kind of got a seventies vibe. So a little farmhouse on a river mountains in the background, a dollar. Yeah. I'm not in love with the frame. It doesn't connect well. I will either remove it and put it up for sale or what I will do. And I've done this before and it works. I'll offer two shipping prices. One, just take it out and one, higher price for shipping if you really want the frame too. That works. I've done it before. So that's something to think about if you never have me come in even closer. Isn't that cool? What is that? 14 by 14? It's bigger than 12 by 12. Looks like 14 by 14. So that's an easy enough size of artwork to ship, right? I try not to get real big artwork unless it's like we're talking about hundreds, right? Hundreds of dollars. Um, I did flip a pretty Decent size, I think 22 by 24, something like that, because it was a black velvet painting of a dupe of Fratella. And that was the copy of a Marshall Tucker album from the 70s, 80s or 70s. Had to get that. Sold it for about 50 or $60. Shipping was a little challenging, but it was large, but it wasn't heavy. Do you know what I mean? Black velvet painting. Um, those are, can really bring you some good money. Uh, and this was before we switched to cubic, cubic like shipping rates. So the size really wasn't a hindrance too bad. All right, let me freshen up and get something to drink. Move on. Again, for those of you watching this later, I went live to have some fun with people. I'm lollygagging, taking my time. This is not a clean, crisp, professional video. I will upload it, though. So, okay. 
Now, I'll just bring some of this stuff over. I love this. This is a um, Cap and Kent. It's not a Culver or anything, but I liked the theme. Frosted and then the gold. So this is probably what, 60s or 70s, but I like the theme, Air Force Academy. There it is right there. It happens to be just a couple miles up the street across the highway. I live the very north end of Colorado Springs. I can see the academy out my window or the chapel anyways, the tall chapel like this. So we have the Air Force Base, but we have the Air Force Academy. So think like West Point, but for, for the Air Force, where they come to train and things like that. And then we have the base down south. And then of course we have Army Base too. So this was a dollar fifty nine. I'm not sure what it's worth yet. I just know it was super cool. The gold's in great shape. There, that's better tilting it. With all the Air Force Academy, that's an American icon. So I'm gonna definitely. What is in here? Oh my jewelry! Woohoo! That's right. I'm busting out the jewelry videos any day now. My kit came in that I I ordered that kit like what Thelma Thrift uses to test for gold and silver. Um, content about fifteen dollars free shipping on eBay. It's the one most people use, a seven piece with the little, you know, slate thing too, and you rub it on and put in the different chemicals, and it'll kind of help you determine. You know, it's not a high end test, but it'll kind of help you determine. I've been stockpiling unique jewelry, even though I barely know what I'm doing in that area for about three or four years now and watching all my favorite jewelry girls. So finally gonna do it. So yeah, here's some jewelry I picked out. A little frog pin. Really, I'm gonna put all the jewelry, I'm gonna get the jewelry out and do it, okay? So I'm not even gonna get it out of the plastic. It's just a little frog pin, super cute. Looks like real gold, it may not be. This is for a sommelier. It's um, cufflinks, but it'd be great for a sommelier or someone who owns wine. A wine store it's a corkscrew and a wine glass i don't know if you can see it through there so i was like that's a yes all this stuff was super cheap it was half price day these are for me these little cut out wooden i'm gonna keep those they're i think they're very mid-century modern so i do love those very much so i'm gonna keep those okay um, this is a thing. I already looked it up and found it. I forgot. You can wear it as a necklace or a pin. This is most likely silver and it's a pretty good chunk of silver. You could just tell by looking at it. I paid half price, $2.50. I don't know if that's going to zoom in, you guys. Hang on. See, it's got some markings there. I haven't done my nails. That's what I'm going to do tonight after I watch George antique nomads every wednesday live show oh my gosh george the antique nomad every wednesday he teaches us he does shows all over the world and goes to them and he teaches us about antiques not just vintage so antiques is a whole different ball game he is fascinating to watch he and his cameraman i think his cameraman is is the morph character that you see in the side chat Anyways, I'm pretty sure this is worth about 30 some dollars or so. Who knows about the silver content? It's pretty hefty and it's marked. Can't remember. We'll go through all that when we do the jewelry. Oh, there's another piece in here. Oh, a fake nose ring. Okay. And you saw me pick up this little kind of 70s looking. It could be a repop, but I don't think this particular one is. There we go. Sorry. Isn't that cute? $2.99, a little out, Articul or retic articulated, yeah, in this case articulated because it moves. Um, long necklace, that's really cute. Tri-tone tri color metal. I'm not sure about that. We're going to do, we're going to get all the jewelry out and just look at it. And some of you are going to have to help me. I'm hoping some of the jewelry people will come in and help me on that. Okay, lusterware, Japan. I only pick up a few pieces just to say that I've sold some too, but this one's quite unique with the little, it's a little um, covered dish, lidded dish of a duck. So made in Japan, lusterware, it was $1.99 and they sell for around 15-ish, around 15. That's okay. He's in great shape. 
The ones that have the real, like the gold, the shiny gold metallic trim sell for a little more. But knock that off my bucket list. This is not old, okay? But it's made to look old. This is about 70s. I can tell by the shape of the Made in China sticker. 159 it's just a little closing a like little letter holder or picture put a picture in it or something isn't that cute though with the um ladybug so i just thought it was super cute it's got rhinestones in it the ladybug nice little closing a or enameled enameled piece great shape very kind of like victorian looking right so probably that's probably worth about I don't know, what, $12 or so. Whew. Sales are a little slower, but I'm still listing. I've got all this I can list. I don't have to go thrifting. I can bust out the jewelry. We have to stay home even longer. Finally tackle my big money pile of vintage Levi stuff. Oh my gosh, I've got like, who knows how much money is just sitting in a box, really cool vintage Levi stuff. So I'm cool. I mean, I'm not going to love it if we all have to stay home for too long, but I'll be okay. Always looking at the ducks ever since I be flipping daily, Kenneth on Instagram. He's a reseller in Atlanta. He'll say greetings from Atlanta real slow. <laughs> he got some kind of duck decoy that because of offers and questions on ebay he found out it was worth so much more than he originally thought i think it ended up selling for like five figures can't remember exactly i reposted it in my instagram i b i b flipping daily scroll through his instagrams down a little bit because i think this was last year it was crazy so i always look at the ducks and the decoys now this isn't really a decoy this is a home decor piece but look at the quality of wood and carving and it is signed somewhere in there. So I haven't looked up the name yet, but I just knew from the quality that this is worth more than $2.99. Look at that. Beautiful, huh? So we will research that and put it up for sale. Hi, Lindy. <laughs> nope, I didn't tell you again because I know that you are like, up to here with little kiddos and <laughs> trying to do your own work at the same time. I feel for you. Love this stuff. Sells pretty well. And this one was only a dollar. No chips. Nice, cute little color pattern. The only thing I noticed that is wrong about this is this one corner is not black. I don't know. <laughs> to me, it should be. Maybe there's a point to it, but for a dollar, I'm going to resell it. I've sold a couple of these before and I have a couple up now. What is this like 50s, 60s? And some people really like these. So I'm going to come in closer in case you don't know what I'm talking about. These things usually on some kind of metal back. Okay. I think the last one I sold for over 20, it was for over 20. Hi, Pamela. Oh, <laughs> did I get more smiley face? Yes. And this one is a balloon in the clouds. So I will use those for thank you gifts like on Poshmark. Little thank you cards. Okay, they're blank. But it's a happy face balloon floating through the clouds. So I thought that was a good idea for my branding. Um, some people collect old playing cards. And these are definitely old. I paid 99 cents. And Stancraft is a good name. So, and it's got like a golden speckled case. So I'm thinking 50s, 60s, can't say for sure. But made in USA, that's another telltale sign. I hope when I open it up that one pack is out of the plastic and one isn't. So I hope the pack that's out of the plastic still has all 52 or however many it's supposed to have. Um, I'm betting so. If not, they're still collectible to some people. They, they collect vintage playing cards i collect certain ones that are more poker related i have like some vintage poker stuff like i can't just keep everything so i have to be really picky it goes back again to not wanting like to end up with another 300 unit um collection 
this is too much. So for 99 cents, then I'll look up, do the research, count the opened deck, see what we're dealing with. Who knows what these, it could be $10, it could be $100. So that's a thing, y'all. See what's going on in the chat. People just hanging out. I have not been out of the house for over a week now. <laughs> Saw me pick up this in my thrift with me. I haven't figured out whose it is yet, but you'll be able to from the pattern and the pattern on the bottom. So it's a marigold carnival glass. It could have been made yesterday. It could be vintage. I'm leaning toward vintage because of the quality. It's just a lot of detail in its footage. So I'm leaning toward vintage on this piece. This isn't the most desirable color either, but for $3, it just feels really good. It'd be great if it was a Northwood because I would bump the price up, but I don't think so. It's not that much quality, but it's more quality than like, it feels more quality than like Indiana glass, more ornate. I'll show in case somebody watching this now or later says, I know exactly that pattern. And then there's the bottom with another little flower and footed. Super cute. $3, that's a yes. Okay, this is new, but I just thought it was pretty for a dollar. That is new, but I just love that periwinkle color. Probably just going to use it in the bathroom or something. It's just not even... There were a whole bunch of them. They're not vintage. Let's move on. Okay, this is vintage. So I paid a dollar twenty-five. A nice satin blue. It's, it's pretty. Let me turn this light on because, you guys, this is prettier than it shows. Okay, there. That's a little better, right? See how pretty that is with the grapes. So again. It might, it looks like it was a compote. I, it, I feel like this was supposed to have a lid and that's too bad that it's missing the lid, but someone could use it for a replacement or just use it as it is anyways. We'll see whose it is. Tell by the pattern and the lines. Looks like it was a blow mold or press mold. $1.50. I'm going to check it out. We're going to save it. No other chips, you know, just the missing lid. I like the color of it. So, and if worse comes to worse and nobody wants it, I'm okay to keep it. Again, it looks so much prettier backlit than me just holding it. It looks so much prettier with the, the backlight. So, nice little piece of vintage glass again. Only because this was cheap, 75 cents. Let's look at some of this stoneware. Salt glaze stoneware. Now this one is by Rockdale. I thought it was going to be Salmon Falls. Let it focus. The stamping in there. I thought it was going to be Salmon Falls. And it probably needs a lid too. But it, it was only 75 cents. I'm going to save it. Probably only going to get about $10 or so for it. Now this one's a different story. I got it. This is my first Eldrith. So and it is signed Eldrith. And it was only $2.99. This is great. Salt glaze crock. Nice little painting on it. Textured blue. Um, You're not going to be able to see it, I don't think. Let's see if we can. Mm, no, it's not going to do it. Okay, it's written in Eldrith. So if you're new in expanding like I am, that's something that you want to know. Add that to your list to familiarize yourself with. Because not all, but a lot of that's his stuff. Her stuff, whatever, brings more money. Another piece of stoneware. Only because this was made in West Germany. I think it's a wine cooler. Probably wine cooler is probably what that says in, in German, right? So I just thought it was a nice looking crock. So it's going to be vintage West Germany. Half price, $1.50. We're going to save it. I'm sure we'll make a little money off of it. You'll have to wait a couple weeks and go see because it takes me a little bit to list things. Maybe not so much right now since we have to stay home, right? So I'm having fun with that kind of stuff. This balloon glass was $2.49. Um, this could be modern. It could not. And it could be. I don't think this is vintage. 
It could be a little older, but it's not going to be vintage, vintage. But that doesn't matter. It could still be an important piece. Does that backlit help? No, not in this case. A little bit, maybe. But this is really pretty. Some kind of glass. You see with this um, swirly. So for a dollar twenty-five, I'm going to save it. You know, they should really call me the crazy vase lady. I keep threatening that I'm going to get an antique booth. I'm going to do smileys on one side and all vases on the other because I really love it. I find so many good vases, vintage and modern. And it doesn't matter. Modern vases will sell too. And um, people for, de for decorating, they want something unique. Um, vases aren't always cheap to go buy when you want something pretty that doesn't look all generic. So I'll probably put that up for probably around 20 and see what happens. And I'm okay to keep it. I don't have one that color. I have a lot of vases, again, because my husband buys me a lot of flowers. So I have fun changing around the vases. We'll continue with the vases and then we'll be about done. This has a smooth ponto, but again, I think this is a more modern piece, but it was only $1.99. I don't know if you could, yeah, you can see the blue in it, right? And that's kind of a nice little shape. So it's great for a windowsill. So again, these modern things. Hey, some people live in more remote areas. They don't have a lot of stores to go to. They shop online and they want some cool stuff. So here's some cool hand-blown glass that's probably modern, but it's cool, custom, unique. Another $1.99 piece with a little window pane. So a window hole there. That's cool. See the smooth pontal? So this would be hand-blown. That's cool. Again, I'm okay to keep this if it doesn't sell. But I can so see me having a booth with just vases and then smiley stuff on one side. Because I'll tell you what, sometimes you can create a buzz. Okay, it's a fine line. Sometimes you have too much of something and people just get like, I can't make a choice. It's too much freedom. I can't handle it. And they won't buy anything. <laughs> but there's a sweet spot where if you have enough of something, they're like, oh, is this a thing? Do I need one? Like, are smiley faces a thing? I Do I need a mug? Do I need a smiley planter? <laughs> Look at this wall of smiley face stuff. So you, you get what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm expressing that right, but it's something I've been kind of wanting to talk about when people talk about um, all of us resellers sharing information and things getting oversaturated. This is kind of something I wanted to, point out okay like let's take um drew and jocelyn no 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 let's take ashley rose okay she likes the glass hens right and so now a lot of her followers that love her are like oh my gosh yeah i want a glass hen now i bought a glass hen because of her <laughs> okay we will go back to drew and jocelyn because a lot of people watch that that channel too the crazy lamp channel so there was a period when that large group of followers or watchers was all gaga over fairy lamps. Well, I caught the bug too. And I'm like, okay, guess I have to have a fairy lamp. If I'm going to sell vintage stuff, I got to have a fairy lamp. So I, I have one. I've sold all the rest that I found, but I kept one, a pretty color. And if I ever find one that's cooler, I'll sell that one and trade it out. I think the one I kept is um, blue, a nice blue. So anyways, to kind of get my point, sometimes we can create a buzz just by talking about something because they're like, don't share all this information like about Lululemon. That happened a couple years ago. Quit telling everybody about Lululemon, the resale value of it. Well, don't really, it can have the adverse of, or the opposite, not adverse, the opposite effects too, where the more you talk about something and create a buzz, you know, and hype it up. Then all of a sudden, everybody wants to go buy a piece of Lululemon too, right? I did. I'm wearing a pair now that I had to go buy a couple years ago. The ones I keep pulling up because I lost a few pounds since I went vegan. Okay, carrying on. This was half price, 75 cents-ish. I'm pretty sure this is, let it focus. I'm pretty sure this is going to be maybe a Fenton. Maybe, right? I'm pretty sure maybe. That sounds good, Iman. 
Hang on. Don't look at my nails. I haven't done them yet. I'm going to do them tonight. Okay. It's hobnail with some Capa de Monte style type, just for reference, like flowers and grapes. Okay. Just a little pitcher, a little creamer pitcher. It's not captured it right, but it's a soft baby pink with white hobnail and white um, 3D relief flowers. Super cute. 75 cents. It might turn out to be a Fenton. I'm not sure. I can't tell if it's glass or ceramic, right? So we'll work on that and we'll see. But you definitely know that it's worth more than 75 cents and probably going to be worth flipping, worth the time. So cute. I don't want to leave it behind. What is on earth? <laughs> this is like a turkey baster or something, you know, like flavor injector. But I need it. Remember when I bought that um, sand sculpture? Let me pull it out. I bought that vintage. This is true vintage, not a pop, not a re, a repop. We sold so many of these in the '80s, so this is a vintage one. Um, but it needs a little bit more fluid in it. And I remember from selling these so many before the internet at, at the indoor flea market. So I needed something, some kind of hypodermic needle or something. This is a little big, but I think I can make it work. Okay. Just to inject a little bit more of this special fluid in there. So ah, that's why I have this. I don't even know where to keep it. A couple more faces. You guys saw me get this. I did pay $5. That's okay. Kind of a jack in the pulpit. I think there's a better name for it. It might not be technically, if you're a purist, a jack in the pulpit because um, of the top, but I'll find out exactly. Nice smooth pontal. So I don't know. It's really a green color, y'all. Two, two types of green, ombre down to blue, cased glass. You can't really tell. This is green too, like a light green. So I've still, if it's not vintage, that's cool. It's not a good maker, that's still cool. I've sold these kind of things before, even if they weren't vintage or like, you know, a, a, a real high-end um, glass, blown glass name. Some people really like to collect these and um, I kind of do too. I've got a couple for my wall. Again, this is most likely a modern piece, but so cute. Confetti. There'll be a name for this shape. Nice little confetti. Blue and white with clear. So $2. We're going to save this too. Uh, it'll probably sell for around 20 ish because it's not vintage and it's not a high-end maker. Probably just a recent import, but it's still cool. Now this one I think is going to be a Fenton too. Maybe not, but along those lines. It's pink silver crest. Sorry, this is pink, you guys. And then a kind of white ombre down here. So this is going to be a Fenton or something along those lines. How much was it? $2.99. Yeah. Dang, I wish this would, I wish the colors would, should, there we go. So that's cute. So you definitely want to pick up things like this too. And then it's not so thin. Like we don't think we have to be afraid of shipping. It's not so thin. And yeah, I had something break last month. I did. And guess what? She sent me pictures. I gave her a refund after I got the pictures for my insurance claim. I filed it online with USPS. Within a week, they sent me the check. Plus my shipping back, 56 something dollars. So she got her refund. I still made a profit as if I sold the plates. I got my shipping back too. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not out any more money, just some time. Unfortunately, a customer wasn't satisfied, but she's not mad at me and she's not mad at eBay. So she's mad at USPS. So I'm not totally afraid. Now I won't buy super, super fragile stuff for shipping, no. But I'm not totally afraid because my thought is if it can make it all these years or if it can make it to being donated and manhandled, put on the shelf, I buy it. I bring it home. If it can go through all that thrifting process, surely I can pack it and get it to a buyer, right? And if not, things are insured and then I'll file my claim. I don't abuse it. I've only had two claims in like, what, eight years or so? So I don't abuse it. They, no problem, right? I still made money. They didn't just reimburse me for what I paid from the thrift store. 
they gave me the whole amount of that sale back plus my shipping costs. So, all right, two more things. Some cut to clear. Green and, and um, green cut to clear. This is not cold paint painted or anything. And so we'll find out who made this. Probably a bohemian glass, right? Type of bohemian glass. It was $1.99. This is why I love the vase aisle because so far thrift stores really, I think they get an abundance of this kind of stuff, planters and vases. And just like with cups and glassware and plates and bowls, right? The kitchen stuff, they get so much of it. They usually price it pretty reasonably. So that's just really a good area for us resellers. Anyways, cut the clear green, most likely some kind of bohemian check glass, right? One more thing. This is going in my wall. This is a vintage Inesco piece. It's still marked. I don't know if you're going to see that. There it is. Still marked. It was $1.59. It says, oh, I'm going to hold that crystal bell. It says, love is forever. A frosted unicorn. Can you believe that his horn is not broken? Oh, my gosh. Can you believe that? So I'm not big on bells. This is going to go into my wall, though. I'm going to have a unicorn on my wall, and I'm all about love. So I might turn it this way. Who knows? Maybe put something in front of it because I don't want a bunch of clear glass in my wall, my display wall, because that's just not going to be quite as interesting, right? So anyways, I love this. $1.59. Resale value on it is about... 15-ish, I believe, since this one still is in perfect shape, pretty rare, nothing, and it still is marked with the label. I don't think something, something like this would be hard-pressed to survive shipping, probably. I don't know. That'd be super packing. I'm going to put this in my wall. All right, you guys. I feel like these two hauls were amazing. Um, did I talk to you about this? Wait a minute. Let me back up. One more thing. I was going to tell you about this. I bought this a while ago. And I hadn't dealt with it yet because I'm like, it's not marked, but this is a quality piece. This is from some, this is a quality piece. I don't know how I could there. Some of you that do glass kind of see what I'm looking at. The color, the shape. And so I decided not to list it and keep working with it because price is everything. I Like knowing provenance on something or, or what something is, shall we say, is, um, I don't have any provenance is very important and it's a you know a price adjuster so i kept working and working on it there's only a few of them out there for sale i finally found it sklo union i'm pretty sure is what this there sklo union and so price just went up on this what i thought might just be a generic piece of glass maybe even modern but it was so confusing because of this pontel but i finally found it and so now this little thing is actually $30 or $40, and I think it's going to go on my wall. But just so you know, look, and see, a lot of us previously, if we didn't do hard goods or learn about glass, like we would, they had this not in vases. They had this over with cups and mugs. Like we wouldn't think anything, right? But it turns out this piece has some good resale value. All right, you guys. That was everything. Oh, two more pieces of clothing. Look at that. I showed you the jacket. Two more pieces of clothing. I've sold this brand before. So don't laugh, okay? <laughs> I've sold this before. It's vintage. It's got real leather trim. Street scene. <clears throat> don't worry about the label. Worry about the style. Anytime you see some kind of style like this, and look, a big old eagle. It needs cleaned up a little. It doesn't really need clothes shaved. It just needs like some pet hair removal. The last one similar like this, but it had a different leather patchwork design, not even a cool eagle. I think I got $40, $40 $45 for it. So what did I pay for this? I paid $4, half of $7.99. And this is a St. John. Okay, it's an older St. John. Okay, that's an older label in the hierarchy, okay? But you can tell the Santana knit. I paid half of $4.99, So I do like the color block, even though it's an older label and sometimes those don't sell as well. I mean, it's very vintagey. 
So when it comes to this older label of St. John, I re it really has to be a cute style. So I felt okay with this cardigan in great shape. Santana, their Santana knit doesn't peel and like lose color very easily. And so see cute color block, right? Red and black. So I don't, I think even though this is older, I think the style translates well to today. So All right. I got to have some socializing. I did not go thrifting. This was from two hauls from two weeks ago. I'm going to leisurely chat about it. Haven't done research on all of it, but that's okay because we need to learn how to do research ourselves and be resourceful. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Boom. Here I come. What am I going to put this with? I'll figure it out. Isn't it cool? Um, it's. I got to put it with some kind of really cool skirt or pants, something really edgy. Do a little mix and match because I really want to go for that um, balming 2021. 2021 look like I really want something. When I say 2021, it's their fashion show preview. So what would that be? 2020 and then 2021. Anyways. Woo woo. Pretty cool. Yep. I'm ready. I am so ready. All right, you guys. Let me catch up on some things. Work on my other channel. We're going to bust out the jewelry. And if we have to stay home too long, we're going to bust out that box of vintage Levi's. Oh, my gosh. That might be not real thrilling to your average reseller. But if you're into the clothing and the vintage Levi and you know the profit potential, then even though it'll be a slow process of watching me research and look everything up, it'll be valuable to you, though, if you're into that kind of thing, because you know that there's some money in the vintage Levi stuff. I've got some pieces I'm keeping for myself. I'll never sell. All right. I will talk to you guys later or see you on one of your videos. <laughs> Clock it out. Bye-bye.